السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد قال عز وجل بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صيام يوم عاشوراء قال يكفر سنتين قال يكفر سنة سنة الماضية respected brothers and sisters in the wake of the hurricane coming human beings are in a state of panic but as Muslim we must understand if there is one set of people who actually understand on earth why these occurrences are happening then it should be the Muslims because we are given the best and that is the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam scientists might say something else but as Muslims we believe one thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he decide to send some calamity on a nation it is only because of one reason and that is the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the flood came to the people of Nuh alayhi salam it was not for no other reason because 
their stubbornness in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the people of Lut alayhi salam was stubborn on their action and don't want to change, they persist and they challenge Lut alayhi salam that, oh Lut, you keep saying that Allah will chastise us, Allah will punish us if you don't make tawbah and don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After a long time preaching to those people, the qawm, the people, they're tired of hearing one thing over and over. So what they say to Lut alayhi salam, Oh Lut, let us see what your Lord has in store for us. Let us see what you're talking about, the azab, the punishment. They dare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Nuh alayhi salam, they said the exact thing as the people of Lut. They said, oh, Nuh, you keep saying about this azab of Allah, this punishment of Allah will come upon us if we don't change our ways and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us see, where is this punishment? Ajib. Huh. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not hesitate on those people. And we know what happened. The entire earth was flooded. The water was coming from above and from below. It is said the water constantly pouring out of the earth and above the sky. Allah says for 40 days and 40 nights, the darkness of the rain and the cloud, they could not have seen the sun. At first when they saw the dark clouds, the people of Nuh was in drought. The farmers was complaining. There's no rain, no grass for the animals. So they were rejoicing. They were rejoicing, thinking that this rain will come and we will benefit from it. Rather, my dear brothers and sisters, it was the adab of Allah that was coming. And we know the whole qissa, the whole story. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us and Allah warned us in many times in the Quran you will be treated according to what amount of good deeds goes up to the heavens if good hasanat goes up then the people are spared if zulub and disobedience and masiyah disobedience to Allah goes up then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this azab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a man who whenever he see dark clouds, he does not rejoice. Aisha radiallahu anha says, when Rasulullah says see dark clouds, the first thing he will do, he will leave whatever he is doing and he will make wudu and he will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rakatain and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Allah, save us from the azab, if there's azab coming. He was afraid that his people will be destroyed like that of the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Today we have no fear. Today this insane, this human being, when we hear about azab, we rejoice more. People are rejoicing more. We are asked to make tawbah in these times. We are asked to make tawbah. How many of us this morning after Salatul Fajr, we raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, save us and the entire community from this adab. This hurricane is not a blessing. It is an adab. It comes with destruction. Anything that comes with destruction, it is an adab. Not a mercy from Allah. <coughs> the wind and the water and the flooding will be a source of adab. May Allah protect all, all of us inshallah. We have to make tawbah. If we have not made tawbah yet, we need to make tawbah. We need to wake up Qiyamul Layl tonight, if we have not done it last night. Do not go to bed with ease, thinking that, you know what, I am protected. I'm a mukmin. I believe in Allah. I have my shutters. I have enough water. We are thinking like the kuffar. We are thinking like the people who have no iman. My tank, my car is full. 
My house is, mashallah, full. I have generator. I have hurricane impact windows. Mashallah, I'm good. Whatever is coming, I'm ready for it. When we start thinking like this, then we have start, we are going astray. We are going astray, my dear brothers and sisters. This what is coming, it is a warning from us. A warning to take stock of ourselves. Uh, what wrong have I done? Where did I used to be Allah? What sin have I, have I committed? This is the time to take stock. Make istighfar. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have sinned our souls. We are forsaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh. Invite our family to sit and do dhikr and make dua. Wake up our family for qiyam wa layl tonight and make tawbah to Allah. Do not only teach our family members that you know what, we have enough food, mashallah, we are good. This is not the sunnah and the tariqah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is not the tariqah of ashab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the tariqah of the kuffar, unbelievers, people who have no iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we take precaution, we fill our tank, we have food. But we must put tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Maybe if it, not, it might not be strong enough. Category 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the case. My dear brothers and sisters, only Allah have control of those things. No superpower in the world have control of those things. Flooding, as they say. It is controlled only by Allah. Very important. We live in a nation where all the laws of Allah is broken. Where gambling becomes legal. Where alcohol becomes legal. Where the sin of loot has become legal. Where you think we will hide when Allah will send his adab upon us. If we have not made tawbah to Allah and engage in the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not be like the man. Do not be like the man in hadith Qudsi. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to destroy the entire city. And the angel came into the city to destroy the city. And when he came, he was baffled and he was worried because he saw one abid, one servant of Allah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depth of the night. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one abid, one servant. The angel did not have the courage to obey Allah and to start the azab, the destruction. He went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith Qudsi. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did not refuse your order and your command, but I was worried and I was concerned for one abid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the angel, don't you think I know that there's an abid there? Don't you think I know that there's an abid there? There's a worshiper who worshiped me there? Who prayed to me there? The angel say, Allah, anta la ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a further command. The second command is, go and start the destruction with that abid, with that man first. The angel said, Wallah, Wallah, how can I? He doesn't know the wisdom. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this man was a selfish man. He was a selfish man. He did not give the dawah. He did not spread this deen to his neighbors and to his community. He worshipped me and he prayed to me, but he did not spread my name. Start the adab with him. May Allah protect us. We need to get involved with dawah. We need to invite our neighbors. We need to set good akhlaq in our community. We need to establish the name of Allah. We need to establish the deen of Allah on earth. This is one of our mission. 
One of our mission on earth is not only to eat, live, marry, and die. No. One of our mission is like the ambias. This deen must continue. This deen must continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us as vicerians on earth. We must act like companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this deen, wherever we go in this earth, we do not come to America only to enjoy a good life and to raise a nice family and to make them doctors and engineers. We come here with a purpose. Allah sent us with a mission. And that is the people of this land should know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They must know the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But wallahi, we set the worst example in this community. Except for a few people. In the way we transact our business with our fellow Christian Jews and non-Muslims. Our example is not there to show that you know what? I am a Muslim. I represent Islam. I represent Islam. Whatever I do, I represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My akhlaq should be good. I speak the truth. I do not use foul languages to my co-workers and to my employees and to my neighbors. I share with my neighbors. This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving long lectures and bayan. Uh, there is enough of that. We don't need enough more books. We have enough books. Kitab is too much. Knowledge is too much now in deen. At one click of our fingers, we have the whole Quran there and the whole sunnah there. But what happened to our lifestyle? This is our problem. Our lifestyle. So my dear brothers and sisters, whatever Allah is sending to us, hmm, whatever Allah is sending to us, we will not be spared unless we rectify our actions. Uh, like the man who worshiped Allah in the village, Allah destroy him first. We pray to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and the entire community inshallah. When you make dua, you make dua for your entire community even though they do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray for the protection of the entire nation inshallah. And you pray for the hidayat and the guidance for the entire nation inshallah. And for all the leaders of this community. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not live a life of isolation. That I am Muslim and that is enough for me and I will die as a Muslim. Wallahi will be questioned. Allah will ask us. Uh, this question will be asked us. So my dear brothers and sisters. As we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that in the time of this. When we have adab is coming. We must make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today might be the last day of this year of Hijri. Today might be the last day of this year. 1440. Tomorrow might be our new year, inshallah. The first of Muharram. Muharram is also a sacred month. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the best month and the most meritorious month to make Siyam is Ramadan. And after that is Shahrullah, the month of Allah, which is Muharram. And, and in this day, in this month, we have a sacred day. We have a sacred day. It is called the day of Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. The ulama, the scholars, cannot define. And there is no clear source why this day was given this day of Ashura. Ibn Kathir, rahimahumullah, he cited a hadith from Muslim Ahmed. When he said, from the previous history, Abdullah ibn Abbas reported in this hadith, read the Allah one. He says, on the day of Ashura, and we all know when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, he saw the Yahudi, the Jews were fasting on this day. And he questioned them. Why are you fasting on this day of Ashura? If tomorrow is the first of Muharram, then the following Monday will be the tenth of Ashura. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if I live the other year, I will not only fast the 10th, but I will fast either the 9th or 10th. Make it two days. Why? To be different from the Yahudi. Eh? So you fast either the 9th and 10th or the 10th and 11th. Very important. We should not miss this fast. So he asked them, the Jews, why are you observing fast on this day? They said, 
that on this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emancipated or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Bani Israel from Fir'aun when they were crossing the Red Sea huh? when they were crossing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned Fir'aun on this day and the people of Bani Israel were saved so because of that we fast in observance of giving shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's this fasting is known even before that it's a long hadith Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh says in Muslim Ahmed that it is on the day of Ashura that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured the sickness of Ayub alayhi salam it is on the day of Ashura that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Isa alayhi salam it is on the day of Ashura that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Noah and the people of the ark and it goes on there are many things that happen on this day of Ashura according to this hadith, according to this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so it is not only the saving of Bani Israel it is the entire nation and the hadith continue in Muslim al-Ahban where Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh says Ashura it is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts his creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts creation with Ashura the Malaika Jibreel alayhi salam was created on the day of Ashura the first raindrop to touch the earth it was an Ashura Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his Arsh on the day of Ashura and it goes on it's a long hadith so even before that the Ambiyas Ayyub alayhi salam used to fast on this day because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure his sickness mm. Nuh alayhi salam used to observe the tent of Ashura because on this day Allah saved him and his people of the ark mm. but the hadith that we know of in Bukhari and Muslim is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the people of Bani Israel from Fir'aun so that what we know most is the most authentic mashallah nevertheless it is a day of thanksgiving where we fast and give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is on the day of Ashura that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Adam alayhi salam from the heavens to the earth and we can go on and on there is a narration that is not sahih but it is not a forged hadith it is a weak hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the hadith said Daru Qutni Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will end the creation and will end this earthly life and Qiyamah will start on the day of Ashura because it was this day that Allah starts creation and this day of Ashura will fall on that time when Allah already on Friday because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the creation with Friday and Allah will end the creation with Friday inshallah this is Sahih we all know this that is why Friday is the day that the fishes in the ocean and the birds in the sky they fear Allah the most and they are trembling on this day because they know that on this day of Friday it is the day that Allah promised and Allah says it will be Yawmul Qiyamah every creation of Allah fear this day except in sun we are very relaxed we are very relaxed in Yawmul Jumu'ah we have no fear whether Qiyamah come or not that's it my dear brothers and sisters we need to take stock of our lives as the hurricane is coming this is a reminder to us reminder meaning it is one of the sign of Qiyamah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start sending all these calamities flooding fire wind they will come before time it used to take long duration before we have one now it's coming very quickly you can hear of something earthquake and disaster almost every single day or every single week of the of the year it is not like one year and two years it's coming every often so it means the meaning of that that Qiyamah is near Qiyamah is near and we need to take stock of ourselves it's a reminder for us 
Many of us, many of us, we don't even think that we have a hurricane coming. I should make tawbah to Allah. I should seek forgiveness to Allah from Allah. Many of us, we go through our daily mundane activity as if though nothing happened. We have to inculcate the quality of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The taqwa Allah. You know, only then Allah will protect us from this adab. Unless we recognize, you know, scientists say for many reasons we have all these things. Global warming, whatever the case may be, they have their explanation. We don't disbelieve. The point is, as Muslim, we believe the more insane sin, the more they commit wrong, the more the adab will come. The more hardship will come on earth, the more our daily sustenance will get hard for us. We work, we are the first generation. The second generation of our children and grandchildren, they will be facing a much more difficult time in this country in terms of risk sustenance. They will have to work harder than us. They will sweat more than us. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the more sin prevail, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not send sustenance on the earth. It will become more difficult. Insan will become more worried, more depressed, more anxiety about their daily sustenance. Ah, it will get more difficult. May Allah protect us, inshallah. Quli kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Inna Allahu malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayu alladhina amanu Sallu alihi wa sallimun taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Wa ala li Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim Wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Wa barik ala Muhammad Wa ala li Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim Wa ala ala Ibrahim Wa fil alamin Innaka hamidun majid إن الله يأمر بالعلي والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد كانت الصلاة قد كانت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا